Uh, hey folks, welcome to Guitar Daily. It's Nick Granville coming to you from Wellington, New Zealand. So I was kind of thinking about this this morning. What is one of the single best things you can do to kind of improve your blues playing? and Kind of make it a little more sophisticated, a little more hit. And I thought, let, let's discuss that today. So probably the biggest thing I see with a lot of people is that they kind of get stuck in this pentatonic rut. I totally get it. We all do, right? Um, and there's nothing wrong with playing pentatonic. Don't think for a second that you have to play something else other than pentatonic. Um, because, you know, lots of people have made their careers out of that. Look at Eric Clapton, you know, pretty much plays pentatonic and sounds killer. So it's not really a problem, but you might get to that point where you go, look, I just, I'm looking for something more out of my playing. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So one of the things a lot of people start doing is they start looking for other scales, other arpeggios, other sounds, right? And they might go to the Mixolydian scale. So a C major, a G, we're in the key of G. So we go um, G major scale, but instead of the seventh, we put the flat seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. And you can do it up an octave. Right? And they figure that out and then they go and they start using it and then they go to the, they realize it doesn't really work very well on that chord, right? Because we have that note, right? And yet, is in G, right? So it doesn't particularly work. So then they start going, well, what if I move up to C mixolydian when the chord changes? Same thing, a C major scale with a flat seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, C mixolydian. And of course we can do it up an octave. And of course I'd urge you to kind of learn that across the whole neck, right? But people sort of get into that and then they sound like they're playing scales. Right? I'm sure you can all relate. And then the chord moves to C and they go... And then they're back to G. So on and so on, right? A better way of looking at it, and I've talked about this a bit on this channel, but it's probably something that needs revising again, is instead of moving, try and do it in the same place. So if we look at C mixolydian, what it would look like here, right so c major scale with a flat seven right so the the b natural becomes a b flat so we go c well g but this is c major scale starting here g a and then it's going to be instead of being a b natural we go flat right so that's the flat seven there's our root note right and if we were to continue the rest right if we look at that, it kind of looks like G Dorian. It's not, because it's over a C7 chord, it's still C Mixolydian. We're just starting from a G. But the easy way to think about it, and this is kind of where a lot of people um, would benefit, is to think G Mixolydian to G Dorian. Now you've got, you're actually playing C Mixolydian, but you're not thinking that way. There's, no, there's little thinking that has to happen, and that's a good thing. G mixolydian, then we go to the C chord, and we're actually spelling those chords properly. It's something that players like Robin Ford and John Schofield uh, Bill Frizzell, these players that have a bluesy edge to their playing, but they're not really blues players, they're kind of coming from a jazz point of view, but they're, they're, they're blues, but I'd call it sophisticated blues, right? And that's what they do, is they're playing, they're moving with the chord changes, but in a way that makes sense, right? Because like I mentioned, if we play G mixolydian here and then move up to C mixolydian up here, it's going to sound scalar, because, scale-like, because you're playing here and then all of a sudden you have to jump. Whereas if you can make your ideas go through the chord change, you know, but still spell the chord change, we're on to a winner. So, there. So on and so on, right? And that's just the first two chords of the blues. You can do the same thing with the five chord, right? But what I would suggest you do too is also look at where, where are the arpeggios in all of this, right? So we can kind of go, well, the scale is useful. Totally. It's our G mixolydian. Where is the G7 arpeggio within that shape? Or arpeggio, as Americans would say, right? Would be it, right? And 
we go to the C chord, where's the C Mixolydian uh, scale shape? Would be like our G Dorian, as I mentioned, in terms of how it looks. But where's our C7 arpeggio? And then importantly, make sure you're going down to the low G note. So now we have... guessed it when we get to the five chord and of course this is just one position we don't want to solo necessarily in one position so I'd say probably a good idea is to do the same thing but instead of having this position be our only one what happens if we move the whole thing up here maybe we have G Mitzelidian here uh, G7 I should say Play the right notes and then we have C7 up here. And the related scales and all the stuff that do it. And we start to sort of build up a picture of how these things look, right? And that's a, that's an important thing in my view is how you kind of visualize it. Um, the goal is not to be able to have to visualize it all. Of course, you want to be able to hear and you want to be able to flow, like flow through the chord changes, but we've got to start somewhere, right? And the place you start is by visualizing it like what does it look on the like on the guitar and you know sometimes there's this idea that um, using shapes and stuff is wrong I don't, I don't agree um, saxophone players think about fingerings piano players when they play will look at a shape right now when you get to a point where you get beyond that but you've got to start somewhere so start with looking at for those shapes and then eventually what will happen is over time it'll just become a natural thing and you'll be able to make melodic music with it that's the goal Hope you found this useful. Um, if you have, please subscribe and please like the video. All that stuff helps. Post every day here on YouTube. Almost at 300th episode for Guitar Daily. I can't believe I've done all 300 without missing a day. So even when it's gotten crazy, I've had to prepare and sort of think about that kind of stuff. So, But it's been fun. And I'll keep doing this as long as it's fun. That's my only reason for doing it. Is it's like, you know... And I don't care about, about numbers, I don't care about any of that kind of carry on. You know, people go, oh, I've got X amounts of subs, that means I'm good. No, it doesn't. It just means that people, you're playing the game, right? I'm not playing the game, I'm just doing this because I want to do it and it's fun, right? And that's why, you know, it's fun to talk about that 63 Strat of my friend Lee's, you know? Because it's, it's an exciting guitar and it's awesome to share it with you all. You know what I mean? Like, people have these things, um, you know, what... Some people might never ever get to hear a real 63 Strat kind of in detail like that. So if I can contribute that, awesome. If I can contribute scales and things to you all. So if you found this useful, please subscribe. That, that's one thing that helps because then you won't miss what I'm going to do next time. Thanks very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.